this week we've had one of the more interesting battery stories, an actual real-world partnership that might finally push solid-state batteries out of the lab into real cars that we can actually buy and, and see. So it's not from China either. So we've got Factorial Energy from the US and POSCO, or P-O-S-C-O, -O, Future M from South Korea, uh, and obviously not the north of Korea, announcing a joint effort to speed up development of all solid-state EV batteries. And unlike all of the vague press releases that we're always seeing uh, in the EV world, this one has actually got some substance to it. So that's why I'm making a video on it. Both companies already supply materials and cells to automakers, and this deal basically says, let's work together and make the stuff that's been holding solid state back. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. So just as a side note regarding the video from the other day, BYD, decided to pick up the guy's car for free, basically, and they've messaged uh, me directly as well. They did that yesterday, I believe it was. So they're trying to sort it out like a champ, I think that's what, uh, that's my impression. So thank you to all of the people who uh, are supporting the channel, these are the channel members. So I've read through all of the details on this and I wanna break it down in normal language because solid state battery news can feel quite a bit lofty at times. And of course, everyone's on the bandwagon just talking about nothing. So this one is kind of more grounded. So it's not, uh, you know, we invented a miracle cell that no one has ever seen and you'll never buy in your life. It's uh, not a vague breakthrough video or anything like that. So it's two companies saying, we know what materials we need. We know how to do it. So let's go and do it. We know uh, what the challenges are and we're gonna share our research publicly and manufacturing uh, processes to actually make these uh, batteries at, uh, at scale, basically. A fascinating story. So Factorial, if you're not familiar with them, already has investments or partnerships anyway with Mercedes, Hyundai and Stellantis. So they're not a small lab in the, um, in the woods, basically, in a little shack. So they're a real, so they're a real big player that has been handing out test sales to automakers, POSCO, or I'm gonna call them POSCO from now on. Uh, on the other hand, supplies cathode and anode materials to basically everybody, to be honest. So LG Energy Solutions, uh, or LG Energy Solution, uh, Ultium Cells, Samsung SDI, SK On, and others, actually, there's actually a few more. So they're one of the few companies that uh, you, you've probably never heard about, but then they make half of the ingredients for the, the batteries that are in the cars that we drive. So the big question is here, what does the partnership actually achieve? One of the hardest parts of all solid state batteries has been finding a solid electrolyte that doesn't crack, basically. So that sounds really simple, but imagine trying to bend a ceramic plate without breaking it like a, you know, a plate that you'd eat your food on, for example. So that's kind of like your EV battery when you hit a pothole. So you've always got vibrations, obviously, over the course of 100,000 miles, for example, you'll see quite a lot of vibrations that will cause cracking and uh, shifting temperatures from very, very hot to very, very cold. If you're in the north of Europe, for example, uh, expansion and contraction, that sort of stuff. And it's a very big deal. So it really, you know, buggers up the batteries. And uh, instead of the liquid electrolyte absorbing that movement, like a cushion, even some batteries that are called solid state batteries have three, four, five percent uh, liquids in actually. And this is part of the reason why. So a lot of prototypes crack. And once they crack, the battery is basically done. So you've got to take it out and bin it. Or, you know, try and recycle it if you can do. Factorial has some success here with their FEST platform. They delivered their first solid state cell prototypes last year. And Mercedes even fitted one into a modified EQS. They drove it from, uh, you probably saw this on the news actually, I actually mentioned it once, from Stuttgart in Germany to Sweden, which is 750 miles. It's well over a thousand kilometers, like 11 or 1200 and uh, still had 85 miles left. So they did all that on one charge. So um, yeah, it's not theory, you can definitely go, they, they're real. So that's a uh, real EV, you know, it's not even a very small, tiny light car, it's quite a heavy car, so that's a very successful trip. Now, is that battery ready for mass production? Of course it's not, but it does show the mass work and that they can actually produce the battery. So if, uh, you know, if you give engineers enough time and real data and money, they will usually get things done to scale if, uh, 
if they can. So this partnership with POSCO is basically the next step and they are bringing cathode and anode development, um, including silicon anodes and uh, lithium metal tech and they have factories, yeah, they have a few factories actually, but they have the factories and the raw material, uh, raw materials network. Factorial brings the solid electrolyte and the cell design. So to put it simply, one of the companies knows how to make the guts of the battery and the other knows how to make the outer skeleton and the internal pathways basically. And uh, together they might actually get something very, very manufacturable within the next two or three years. And I think that's the key word here, manufacturable. So, uh, so you know, we've had a decade of solid state is coming any minute now, obviously from Toyota. Toyota obviously have been saying 2025, they also said 2013 and then 15, 17, 20, 25. So the Toyota is a repetitive thing. It's kind of a, like an insider joke, I think, at this point. And uh, QuantumScape making uh, publicly avowing it as well, you know. So every investor deck saying uh, breakthrough. But the reason nothing has actually hit the market is because making these things consistent and durable uh, and safe is much harder than, uh, than getting a single cell to work in a lab. So the materials are new. They're not, no one's really got that much experience with them. The processes are new. Even the machines to make them don't exist yet. Not, not at scale. I mean, there are, they do exist in a, in a lab, but not in a massive factory that can do lots of battery cells in a day. So POSCO already said that one of the biggest bottlenecks is simply the equipment. You can't just reuse lithium ion machinery. You need new cutters, uh, new casters, new electrolyte injection systems or non-injection systems. Actually, you know, it's not as common. Depending on how, uh, how solid you go, like I said, obviously some batteries manufacturers say they define their own uh, solid uh, batteries by saying you know, it's solid battery, but sometimes some manufacturers have 3% or 5% or 4% solid uh, liquids in their batteries and any more than that and they don't say that it's a solid battery but it is by and large solid. So uh, that's a good thing to know. Factorial is not trying to do every part themselves which is usually where these companies fail. Toyota famously wanted to do the whole thing in-house. Uh, QuantumScape they rely very very heavily on Vol uh, Volkswagen but this arrangement is closer to how lithium-ion grew in the EV world up until now. So a research specialist and a material specialist working together. One of the things that uh, is really interesting is that POSCO is already doing lithium metal anode research. If Factorial's solid electrolyte can stabilize lithium metal at scale, that's when you'll start to see uh, longer ranges and people talking about 600 miles on a charge, maybe even 700 miles on a charge. And uh, if you live in Australia, that's actually, you know, that's obviously what you're going to want because it's a big country. And uh, imagine actually doing Brisbane to Sydney in, uh, you know, with one stop. That would be pretty cool, actually. And uh, yeah, or, or doing maybe three or four hundred kilometres uh, commute without having to care about it. You could just get, get all the way there and back or go to work 150 kilometres and come back. That's pretty good, you know, like if you're a a GP or something and you work in Sydney you've got to go out to another town to do some locum work and then you come back again. It's pretty useful stuff. So the timeline still looks pretty uh, like the end of this decade basically in the next three, four, five years and uh, for commercial adoption probably around 2028, 2030 or something like that unless someone pulls a genuinely surprising uh, proverbial rabbit out of a hat or something like that. Uh, Mercedes has already tested the factorials earlier version obviously work to treat. They've even come up with a newer version, so we haven't seen that yet. But uh, yeah, they're clearly confident enough to invest. Stellantis as well. So one more thing worth mentioning is cost reduction. Factorial basically said partnering with POSCO helps them cut costs at scale. And that does really matter because even if you make the best cell in the world, it's, uh, if it's you know twice the cost of an LFP pack, nobody's going to use it in a $25,000 car. So uh, yeah, solid state has got to come down in cost aggressively or it is going to be niche for the next few years, you know, for the next five or 10 years. So yeah, luxury sedans, performance models, maybe aviation uh, batteries and that sort of stuff. So my gut feeling is really that the first real solid state EVs will be expensive. I think probably most, I would imagine at least 50% of you watching are probably thinking the same thing too. And uh, so maybe even like the original Tesla Roadster, that sort of thing, you know, showcasing the tech before it kind of trickles down. But what we've seen 
uh, you know, BYD has done with LFP, I think we're going to see that again, basically, driving the price down massively through mass production and efficiency. So uh, once production ramps up, costs could fall faster than maybe we expected, maybe something just similar to what we expected, who knows. So for now, this announcement is one clear step so that the companies actually capable of making solid state batteries have stopped working alone. They're, you know, going at it together sort of thing. So yeah, they're joining forces and that's usually going to mean that the technology is nearing a stage where collaboration makes financial sense. So it's a kind of tell, actually. Let me know what you think. Or, uh, you know, do you see solid state arriving this decade? Do you think it's going to be pushed back post-2030? Or uh, do you think LFP and sodium ion will dominate because they're just cheaper, simply, and uh, they're good enough, and they're pretty much here now. So, yeah, genuinely curious to know what you all think about this. And uh, I know a lot of a lot of you work in engineering and uh, energy, so you'll have your own thoughts on you know where the bottlenecks really are. Feel free to say at it in the comments. You know, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time.